Welcome to another episode of Racing to Learn. We're a nonprofit that gets kids excited about math and science. We've got our team associated SC10 on the bench today. This is kind of a vintage truck, but uh, team associated has continued to make vehicles based on this chassis uh, in their two-wheel drive line here. Um, it was uh, it was uh, replaced by the SC10.2. Uh, or dot two, whatever you want to call it. Uh, then it, it's you know it's come back as like a, the reflex desert buggy. Uh, you know they had um, kind of a rat rod, uh, you know vehicle too. A whole bunch of two wheel drives. Pretty much anything that's team associated that's two two wheel drive that you can still buy today is based on this. Uh, there was the Pro SC, so uh, you know really solid in terms of its uh, its history here. We bought this used off of. Um, off of a fellow racer at NorCal Hobbies. Uh, it was set up for the clay track there. Now because of um, the current situation, uh, you know, where we're, uh, we're sheltered in place here uh, in California, we, we can't really go to NorCal anymore and, and race this on the clay track. Actually, they've replaced it with carpet since we've been. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, take these uh, slicks off. We got pro lines. Um, in the back, what are these, like, Panthers or something like that? I don't know. These are even starting to crack here, unlike the Pro Lines, which have held up really well. Um, but, uh, you know, this truck is a little bit unique in that it, um, oh, actually, I even have to get the right tool for this. Um, it, it still used non-metric hardware. That's one aspect, but also, yeah, this... This wrench isn't gonna work. I'm gonna have to bust out my my SAE or standard uh, tools here. So let me grab that from the toolbox. Hopefully, I have a wrench in here somewhere. Ah, here we go. This should do the trick. So, you know, this truck still used standard hardware. So, oh, that's too small. Quarter inch is too small. I've got to get the appropriate wrench here. Yeah, it's probably on that second layer of my toolbox. You know, it's, um, I think the later iterations of uh, the trucks or the team associated vehicles, they actually, I didn't, don't think, I know that they switched over to metric hardware which is nice. All right, so this 11 30 seconds wrench is what I'm using. Another aspect of these vintage vehicles is that they did a little bit, they did things a little bit differently back then. Um, and we're gonna get a surprise here because we've never taken off these wheels and tires since we bought the truck. Uh, this truck's got a lot of upgrades on it, too. So, oh, nice. Like this. It's got all sorts of surprises in here. Uh, these are locking or clamping hexes. Whoa. There's a little battery uh, spacer there. So these are a nice touch. These lock onto the axles so they won't fall off. And they're also aluminum so they won't strip. Um... We'll take off, oh, different size nuts. So I did need that quarter inch. Let me go back over here and get that. I knew I had that in my toolbox for a reason. I just bumped my camera there. So, um, let's see what we've got in the front here. Yep, quarter inch in front. Gotta love the different sized hardware used front to rear. That. Thankfully, those days are behind us. All right. So here's another showing the truck's vintage is the fact that the bearings are inside the wheels. Right, look at that. And that's not even a sealed bearing here. It's just metal shielded. There's no rubber keeping those that dust and dirt and grime out. So, um, kind of expected this. We're going to have to pop out those bearings. Uh, we might even, hmm, well, we run into problems with these bearings. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, we'll uh, go ahead and get this other side off here. Um, 
But uh, we're going to switch over to a tire that's better suited for the running that we're doing now um, in the backyard in the park, which is more dirt and grass. So we're going to swap out this hardware, or not hardware, these wheels and tires for the stock wheels and tires, actually. And you can see some of the upgrades that we've got on this truck. We actually had a, a B6, Team Associated B6 buggy um, that we bought used as well from, uh, from uh, someone on Craigslist. Um, ended up getting rid of that, thankfully, before this whole shelter in place quarantine situation manifested itself. <laughs> We sold that to a guy that was um, that was a large scale RC racer, but wanted something a little bit smaller that he could do uh, at NorCal or race with his buddies over at NorCal. All right, so we're gonna be switch swapping over to these. We've got a whole box of these that um, I think these. I'm wondering who we got these from. Don't even remember anymore. I think they came along with the truck, but it seems like an awful lot of tires that came with the truck. I think we got him through perhaps um, another uh, deal. But uh, you'll notice on these, these won't work because they have these cross pins here and that was for how people used to mount wheels and tires. Uh, they would just be uh, something like this. A pin through that axle. So again, the evolution of RC here. Um, thankfully, people switched over to um, hexes. Uh, these were even more prone to stripping, but um, yeah, I don't know what we'll use these on. <laughs> but uh, we'll throw those off to the side here. wasn't wasn't sure if I was pretty sure that the previous owner upgraded to hexes. Uh, here's another. One, uh, oh, here's one with the hex, so we can definitely use this. We've got kind of a mix and a mash here, so the, these we'll use those in wheel bearings. So we'll pop those out. Um, I should keep these slicks. Oh, yeah, the other one's under the truck. Um, pop out these bearings. Let me get a, a driver here to pop those out. These bearings, we'll check the state of these. Maybe if we uh, we might replace them with some shielded bearings given the uh, the dust and dirt in the environment that we're running in now. They're still rolling smoothly, so we'll probably just dust them off and, and throw them into these wheels. Oh, this one, look at this. This one already comes with metal shield bearings already installed. Our lucky day there. So we that bearing is still good, and that bearing is still good. Oh, and we got another one. We don't need to replace these bearings at all. Look at that. And these bearings are still moving freely. So we'll use those in the front. We've got another one here that can accept bearings. That'll be our spare. Oh, we don't have any that have... Oh yeah, this one will take bearings. Okay, so we've got two spares here. Um, we can't use all these with the, the pins, so we'll put those back in our box. Um, unfortunately, we only have one with a hex. That is unfortunate. Uh, guess we're going to be running a different tire. So, what do we have here? Uh, look at this. Well, we dug out... We dug through our entire collection here. Here's some old uh, Dura tracks when they used to make tires. I don't think they do that anymore. But uh, lockup SCs, pretty aggressive pattern on there. This this will be good in the the dirt, in the um, the grass. So we'll put these stock. Look at the cobwebs on this. Shows you just how long they've been sitting in the garage. So we can pop those bearings back in. The uh, slicks, save them for the track. And we'll put these on the front and the back. So these are 12 millimeter standard hexes. 
so yeah, well, I don't think we'll, we'll make you watch me put these on unless you guys want, but I've gotten some comments that that's boring when I do simple stuff. <laughs> but then again, other people... Oh, actually, I've got a recent comment. Um, I can talk to it, talk through it while I put these on. But um, recently, somebody had asked me uh, if it would be possible to put these bearing styled wheels. This is a comment, uh, uh, I think, on our, our ECX Ruckus or Torment. Um, somebody said, hey, can you can you do a video on how to put these onto uh, a Ruckus or a Torment? Um, I don't know why you would want to do this. This is a, an outdated design and just not being able to use the same, you know, not being able to rotate the tires front and rear. I just don't know why you would want to do that. Um, I don't see a reason for converting to a, an old uh, axle style like this. I mean, you could do it if you if you found um, an axle, but it'd probably be more effort than it's worth. Um, it's much better to have the 12 millimeter hexes uh, like the Ruckus and pretty much any vehicle comes with stock nowadays. So I'm not sure where that what that uh, person was trying to achieve. But I'm going to put some thread lock on here. I'll, I'll show you guys one wheel. If you're a total... Um, if you're totally new to the sport or the hobby, whatever you want to call it. Ooh, that's a little bit too much thread lock there. That's okay though. Um, not that much, much. So we'll put this bearing on. Um, you know, some folks put a washer on, along this old axle style. Uh, not, not super necessary. I don't, actually, I, I take that back. I don't know anybody that does that because I don't know anybody who uses these anymore. Um, but vintage vehicles like, uh, you know, like our, our, um, our Kyosho Ultima, you know, RC10, they will run uh, a bearing in wheel design here. I'll put that lock up on the back just so that you guys can take a look at what this will look like as a finished product. I don't know why anybody would want to go back to um, a bearing and wheel design. I actually saw some for sale at, uh, what's that name? At Sheldon's. Sheldon's Hobbies up here in Northern California. Another local shop. Um, that I even used to go to as a kid, but uh, they had some Duratrex 2.8 inch monster truck wheels and tires that were um, on clothes out there. I think they, they were probably like, I don't know, I want to say 10 bucks. I, I was tempted to get them, uh, you know, to put on a truck like this, but I had no idea what axle size and all that sort of stuff and bearing size. So, um, I, you know, I didn't want to hoard yet another piece of, uh, equipment there. All right. So we've got that one side done. You know, you can run non-matching tires on these two wheel drives. It's okay. On a four wheel drive, you would want the same wheel and tire all around, of course. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and do the other side. Just see, for the sake of completeness here, you guys can see, oh, this wheel only has a bearing on one side. I didn't even check the other wheel. I did not check that. See the bearing in here? I should just check before that thread lock solidifies. So another thing about um, this bearing and wheel design is that, well, I guess you, yeah, there's a bearing in there, okay. So let me get this back on. We need to find a matching bearing for the other side of this wheel. Um, or we'll have to put up with using a non-rubber shielded bearing. You never know what you're going to get. 
in the workshop or my this is probably a met I don't even know if this is a metric size bearing or not. I'd have to look it up on Team Associated's website uh, or something in an old manual. I don't think any of these other wheels have bearings. Nope, no bearings there. That is unfortunate. So we'll just grab a bearing from one of these wheels that we had popped out earlier. Pop out another one. Alright, we'll use that. Uh, should I use that on the inside or the outside? I would say I would put the non-shielded on the inside. And I'm just going to wipe that down real quick. Alright. Yeah, that one still spins freely. Just wanted to double check. Pop that into the wheel. And, oh! Huh. The bearing was on the wheel, Axel. I'm being lame today. I shouldn't say that. But uh, the wheel, the bearing got stuck on the wheel, so we do have a bearing. Look at that. Nice. <laughs> All right, let's get these on. So we'll put the rear on first, and then you guys can see what the finished product looks like. Always good having a sense of completeness. All right. Just making sure that that hex is seated all the way. Got a couple nice upgrades on this truck. You know, while we've while we've got it on the bench, we've got Proline um, shocks on here too, which is they're pretty pricey. So having a high end suspension setup on this truck probably overkill for a basher. Maybe we'll steal those shocks one of these days. But uh, we're gonna be doing nothing but bashing around these parts because uh, the tracks are closed. All right, and there we go, just a dab, thread lock, probably a little too much again, oops, I need to get a nun, uh, I need to bring in my other bottle of thread lock from the, the garage. All right, here we go. So that's the finished product. Now we can run on the dirt and grass in this truck. What else do we need to do on this truck? I don't think we need to do much. Just checking the suspension there. Yeah, upgraded turnbuckles and rod ends on this. Um, so fair amount of upgrades on this truck, which is why we bought it. Um, we put in the Leopard brushless system. It came as a roller. It didn't come with this. We, we pulled this out of um, the Slash LCG two-wheel drive that we had. So this is good to go. Ready to hit the park again in the backyard in this truck. Let us know what you guys think in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, and we will catch you next time. Thanks again for watching.